How's everyone doing? It's Blu-ray time at the Dollar Tree again. Uh, the Dollar Tree has been getting Blu-rays like crazy. I remember a few years ago, it was like once or twice a year, the Dollar Tree would get Blu-rays into this big momentous occasion. Um, but now I feel like it's every month at least. So it is interesting. I never thought this would be the case where it would be like a regular occurrence at the Dollar Tree, but I am excited. Um, I found some goodies in here, but I feel like my local Dollar Trees don't really get a lot of uh, variation. Like I feel like there's usually just the same titles and I see a lot of people getting a bunch of different ones that my Dollar Trees uh, don't have. So if you happen to be at your Dollar Tree looking for Blu-rays and you find uh, Aftershock, uh, starring Eli Roth, uh, or if you find uh, You Are Here with uh, Owen Wilson, Zach Galifianakis, uh, those are two ones that I'm really looking for. And then Life Itself, which is a documentary about Roger Ebert, uh, those three on the Blu-rays. You Are Here and Aftershock have slipcovers too, which is, I feel like it's surprising to find slipcovers at the Dollar Tree, but they're there. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones uh, from previous uh, like hauls from the Dollar Tree that I've seen people get that I want to get as well. But uh, I don't know, it's it's surprising to see some of these bigger studio titles too. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. Let me know if you've got any Blu-rays at the Dollar Tree recently as well, and what's the best pickup you found at the Dollar Tree. Leave those comments down below. But first up is Kiss of the Damned. I remember before, like there was some, you know, kind of off-brand, uh, uh, companies and studios and then it was like a bunch of magnet magnolia this is magnet uh magnolia uh but then there's been a lot of like bigger studio ones so it kind of surprises me like i'm looking through here right now you know fox a lot of fox titles a lot of warner brothers titles recently too um but this is one i have seen before kiss of the damned by uh zan cassavetes who is the daughter of uh, john cassavetes and gina rollins um and i remember seeing this and it's again it's been a while uh since i've seen it and I remember thinking it kind of reminded me of like Jess Franco vampires, kind of uh, very sensual, uh, good cinematography, but I didn't love the movie overall. That was my initial uh, thought of it. And you're thinking like, why are you picking up again? Because I want to rewatch it. I remember loving the cinematography, loving like the sensuality of it. Uh, it's a vampire movie and essentially uh, she's a vampire and she falls for uh, Milo Ventimiglia, I think is his name. I always mess up. Ventimiglia, yes. And, his, and uh, her sister comes and kind of like, um, you know, messes things up a little bit in their relationship. And it's just uh, some wildness and, you know, a lot of uh, very sensual vampire movie is the best way that I can put it. And again, I remember initially thinking it had like a little bit of dress Franco feel to it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to revisit this one because I remember having kind of like mixed feelings on it. Like I remember liking a lot of aspects, but also kind of wanting more from it. But, you know, for a buck, I'll give it a rewatch for that price point. Again, I feel like a lot of times... A, a dollar like why not take the risk you know it's so minimal risk and possibly high reward uh next up is belco experiment which i do have and i love the heck out of this movie bloody over the top action uh horror uh kind of like a battle royale-esque uh and like an office building um but yeah i got this one for essentially like trade bait if anybody wants to do a trade for this one let me know and i would highly recommend this movie if you get a chance to pick it up it is awesome it's office space meets battle royale this is right there on the front cover so um it is just amazing so high recommendation on this one if you uh see it out there in the wild definitely pick it up but if anyone wants to do a trade for it let me know next up uh is 300 rise of the empire on 3d uh, Blu-ray. So that's essentially the main reason I got this one. I've seen this one, but I don't think I saw it in 3D. And I feel like 3D Blu-rays are usually a lot more money. Um, so I figured I'd get this one for a possible trade bait or resale. Um, yeah, I remember really enjoying the visuals for this movie, but also thinking it's very derivative of uh, the first 300 movie. Uh, 300 Rise of an Empire here uh, is bloody. It's the same style of the first 300 but it's kind of just like, again, too derivative, too much of the same thing. Nothing really stood out quite as much as the first one. Again, it's hard to live up to the first one. The first one was visually stunning, aesthetically appealing, groundbreaking uh, visual style for it. Uh, but still really good action, really good effects for it. Um, so yeah, a bloody awesome time. And for a 3D Blu-ray for a buck, heck yeah. Uh, and I haven't opened up any of these. I don't know if they have, I think a couple of them have digital copies. And a lot of times, even if they're expired, you can still redeem them. I remember in the past doing Dollar Tree hauls and selling the digital copy codes and 
uh, making more money on it than what I paid for the Blu-rays. So I think that's crazy to me. Uh, next up is Tell, and this stars Robert Patrick, Faison Love, Milo Ventimiglia. He's in a lot of these Dollar Tree movies. Uh, Katie Sackhoff and Jason Lee. Uh, Jason Lee right there looks wild. Uh, he looks like uh, Negan, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, uh, with the big beard right there. Katie Sackhoff, I really enjoy her as an actress. She was actually recently in uh, The Mandalorian uh, show. Um, so it's pretty cool. I love all the cameos in that show. But Milo Ventimiglia, I know he was on uh, This Is Us TV show, uh, which I've only seen a couple episodes of, but I've liked those episodes. But I, I know it's, what is it, season four now, so I feel like I have a lot to catch up on. I only watched a couple episodes of the first season. Uh, but it was surprising uh, that I enjoyed it as much as I did because there was a lot of hype and it seemed a little sappy and sentimental at first. But I gave it a chance and I liked it, but I feel like I just forgot what time it came on. And then I was like, ah, you know, I just got busy. But I do want to revisit that. But the movie uh, The Divide is like the favorite movie I've seen him in. Uh, I did a movie review on my channel for that forever ago, but check that out. The Divide is just a really gritty, nasty, kind of like a post-apocalyptic, well, a kind of apocalyptic event that happens in these people hiding in like a basement. And uh, I feel like with all those kinds of uh, movies, it kind of showcases man as man's worst enemy. And that's kind of a thing that people uh, start going off in packs and acting crazy. And uh, he's in there, really great performance from him. Uh, but this one right here, he is a small town crook. Uh, his last name is Tell. Um, and uh, he steals a million dollars and he uh, gets caught by the police, goes to jail. Three years later, he gets out and everybody's looking for him and his money. Uh, his greedy ex-wife, uh, ex-partner he betrayed, parole officer, two corrupt cops. Uh, so he's just in over his head and um, it's going to be, I'm sure, tension filled. Um, I feel like it, the concept we've seen so many times like that, I feel like it seems so formulaic, but I like the cast here a lot. Um, so that's the thing that really... Uh, intrigued me for this. And what's funny, uh, he was in the movie The, uh, the Divide, uh, but it says uh, in association with Divide Pictures on the back. Um, so that's kind of an interesting tie-in. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to check this one out because I do like heist movies. Let me know what your favorite heist movie is. Um, just scrolling through here. Uh, again, I'm like, this one is such an amazing find. I feel like a lot of times people talk smack about all oh, the movies that are the Dollar Tree. There's some great movies there. I've picked up some really great ones. And Belko Experiment, if you're a horror fan, definitely check that one out. Uh, next up is one that I was a little hesitant. I was like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. Uh, we'll Never Have Paris uh, with Simon Helberg uh, from The Big Bang Theory. Um, and Melanie Linsky, which I think she was in uh, Two and a Half Men. I think that's her. Um, I was never a big fan of that TV show. I know a lot of people loved it. Uh, I love Big Bang Theory, though. That was like the last TV show that I watched. Uh, I don't, there's really nothing on that. I, well, I take that back, Yellowstone. Yellowstone's the only show that I watch that's like currently on TV. Um, and this also has uh, Zachary Quinto. Is that his name? I feel like he's... He's been in a few things, but I always forget his like last name. I'm pretty sure it's Zachary Quinto. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right there, kind of covering up, the sticker covering up a little bit. But it's a kind of a, seems like a rom-com. Um, they've been together for a while, and then he breaks up with her because this blonde girl that I think he works with, uh, you know, expresses interest right there. And then he realizes he made a big mistake, and he wants to get her back. Um, so I think he goes to Paris to win her back. Uh, she moved there. But yeah, I was actually surprised because I thought she was a lot older. Uh, I remember when I picked this up and I was like, uh, the, the you know, obviously, you know, age, it can be much older. But because um, she's, I think, only four years older. But I, for some reason, I feel like I've seen her around for a lot longer. Uh, he usually plays like quirkier, younger roles. Um, so I remember he was in uh, old school as well. It's like one of the pledges in there, I think. Uh, but Big Bang Theory, he's always going to be known for that. But yeah, so this one looks like it's going to be kind of a formulaic rom-com, but um, I do, you know, I, I like to see him in different things and seeing if he's still going to play that kind of same role that he always plays, like, you know, nerdy kind of role. Um, I guess it's my my love for Big Bang Theory that made me kind of pick this one up. And I do like her, too. Uh, she always kind of plays the quirky uh, roles. Next up is one I've been wanting to see for ages, and that's Frank. This one looks so kind of weird and bizarre. Michael Fassbender uh, plays a musician who... Um, performs in this big fake head and he never takes it off kind of makes me think of like marshmallow <laughs> uh, a little bit uh, basically Maggie Gyllenhaal is in the band too I believe and Domhnall Gleeson uh, and basically you know they think they're gonna make it big time and uh, I guess there's a little bit of controversy with the bandmates 
and uh, I, I remember seeing the trailers for it. It just looked so bizarre and quirky, and uh, I was really intrigued by it, and I just never ended up picking it up. So for a buck, i uh, really excited to get this one, Frank. And I remember hearing good things about it, too. Uh, Michael Fassbender, I mean, he blew up as an actor. I think he's an excellent actor. Let me know what your favorite Michael Fassbender movie is. But the first thing I remember seeing him in was um, Eden Lake, which is one of my all-time favorite movies now. Let me know what your favorite rom-com movie is as well. <laughs> rom-com isn't my favorite genre, but there's a few that I like. Uh, next up is One Last Thing, which is uh, another Magnolia release. This is also a uh, Magnolia release. Again, a lot of Magnolia titles at the Dollar Tree for the past couple of years, I feel like. Uh, this has Cynthia Nixon in it from uh, Sex and the City, and then Michael Agarno, and then <laughs> there's a big sticker on here, um, theme song performed by Wyclef John, uh, Heavens in New York. And then basically, I think he has like a terminal illness in his uh, like, kind of like a Make-A-Wish Foundation kind of thing. They have him on TV, and he says he wants to have a steamy weekend with this, uh, this hot uh, supermodel right there. And basically, um, the agent sets up the meetup, and it doesn't go well. Nothing really, you know, comes of it. Uh, so I guess his friends uh, try to uh, get him to go off to New York City to kind of fulfill his wishes and kind of like hook up with her. So it seems uh, ridiculous, but I'm going to give it a chance. And, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times, like I say, it's for the price point, minimal risk, possible high reward. You can find some hidden gems. I found some hidden gems. Let me know like what the best hidden gem movie you found uh, was. Next up is The Life Before Her Eyes. Um, I don't know much about this one. Evan Rachel Wood and Uma Thurman, I like both of them as actresses. Another Magnolia title. Just reading the back of it doesn't really tell a ton about it. She's waiting for her adult life to begin, Evan Rachel Wood, and she's, uh, I guess, uh, you know, some of her friends are more conservative, and she makes a essentially a life and death decision uh, kind of affecting everybody, and especially the lives of her two best friends. So... Again, not too much told, but I like uh, the lead actresses right here, so I'm going to give this one a shot based on that. also has Oscar Isaac, who I like as an actor as well. This one. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. When I first saw it, I kind of laughed a little bit, but um, I, I do like some martial arts movies, and uh, the lead actor in here, uh, Zhang Lu, uh, it says right on the back here, you know, he's uh, called the next Bruce Lee, and apparently he can break metal or steel bars over his head and a bunch of other stuff so uh action overload i'm sure for this movie uh called blood money and it also stars pitbull the rapper i had to do a double take is that really and it is and then uh gordon Liu too um so again i'm sure this is going to just be you know action overload but again i'd like to see a lot of those martial arts action movies let me know what your favorite martial arts action movie is and who your favorite modern martial arts actor is i feel like there's been a bunch of really good ones um in the past like decade or so and uh i don't know again i'm a sucker for these kind of movies um you know i i loved bruce lee growing up as a kid and uh i feel like there's been some really good ones that i feel like a lot of people you know a lot of people don't know about or didn't get a lot of exposure and it's cool to see like the raid movies those ones actually kind of really got a lot of exposure here in the u.s i'm glad they did because those are two like Two of my favorite modern action movies. Uh, let me know what your favorite modern action movie is as well. And if you've seen the Raid movies too, let me know what you think. And if you haven't, high recommendation there. Another Magnolia film uh, that I have seen right here, uh, Shadow Dancer with Andrew Riseborough, who is in a bunch of movies recently, a bunch of horror movies too. Like Mandy, uh, she was awesome in Mandy. Uh, the new Grudge movie, which I feel like a lot of people just unfairly judged it and said it was a remake. It wasn't a remake. It was kind of like a side story. And I thought it was a good movie, worth checking out. And she was really good in that. And then she's in the new movie, um, uh, uh, Possessor, which is David Cronenberg's kid uh, directed. Can't remember his name. And I feel bad because I really liked the other movie he uh, directed too. I think the movie was called Antiviral, something like that. But it was a really good movie. Uh, so I'm looking forward to Possessor. The trailer looked bonkers, amazing. And she's the, the lead actress in there. Uh, this also stars Clive Owen and uh, Gillian Anderson. Uh, it's about uh, you know the IRA and... Uh, I want to say like running guns and terrorism, stuff like that. And uh, he's an MI5 uh, officer and he's having her kind of go like undercover to uh, kind of like expose her brother's operation and uh, things of like that nature dealing with the IRA. And I remember things kind of go south a bit and uh, a lot of double crossing and, you know, espionage and stuff like that. And I thought she had a really good performance and I feel like there was kind of a lull. Like I feel like I saw her in this, I didn't see her or anything for a bit. And then she kind of came back 
into the fold and did a bunch of movies. Uh, I definitely like her as an actress. Um, I remember this one had some good tension in it, but I wanted a little bit more from the ending. But again, I want to revisit it, so I'm going to do so for a buck. Uh, again, just a ton of Magnet and Magnolia titles. Another uh, Magnet Magnolia title right here is At the Gate of the Ghost, which is a uh, remake of uh, Rashomon from Akira Kurosawa. And I haven't seen this one, um, so I'm looking forward to checking it out. I believe you know it's going to be you know lavish, great cinematography. Um, so I'm excited to check this one out. Uh, the shots that I've seen from it, I remember seeing like a, you know clips from it before, like years ago when it came out and uh 2011 in fact wow time flies uh but i just remember thinking like the cinematography looked amazing i was excited to check it out just because for the visuals that i saw uh it looked great but i don't remember hearing a lot about it honestly so kind of surprising giving that uh, a remake of uh rashomon from akira kurosawa just that alone i feel like would have given it some recognition but i'm gonna give it a fair shot next up is uh barbershop the next cut i remember seeing this one when it came out and liking it but not loving it. I feel like I remember thinking there's like a lot of like politics involved and I feel like that was unnecessary. I really want to get the second Barbershop movie. That's my favorite of the franchise. But again, for the price point of a buck, I'll pick it up. Uh, Nicki Minaj is in this one. Uh, Eve, oh, I, I had a big crush on Eve back in the day. I think she still looks great. But uh, you know, JB Smoove's in here, Common, uh, Anthony Anderson, uh, Ice Cube, Cedric the Entertainer, Regina Hall. Uh, a lot of familiar faces, a couple new ones as well, but it's a, kind of about their neighborhood and, you know, uh, kind of, I believe certain businesses were being taken over and things like that. And he was thinking about selling the shop and they try to save the shop essentially. But I remember thinking there was like a lot of politics involved in it. And I was thinking like, I didn't really care for that aspect of it. I really liked the first one and the second one was my favorite of the bunch. So I just like seeing the cast of characters back and uh, I always liked these movies. So uh, again, the politic aspect, I remember being my, my major issue with it. But for a buck, I will revisit it. And uh, again, you know, kind of, I feel like I want to get the second one now so I can complete the collection of them. Uh, next up is one I had never heard of before. And the front cover is like, eh, is this just going to be like a dance movie? Because it's called We the Party. It's got Usher on there. And it's a Mario Van Peebles movie, which is interesting. Uh, I like him a lot as an actor, seeing him in a bunch of movies back in the day. But this stars apparently Mario Van Peebles, Snoop Dogg, Michael Jai White, uh, some... I guess musical groups I'm not familiar with, The New Boys, Rejects, uh, but yeah, Tiny Lister's in here too. I always remember him from uh, Friday, No Holds Barred, uh, but Quincy Brown, a few other people, but basically this is uh, about a uh, high school party movie, essentially. Uh, five high school friends, and they deal with romance, money, uh, prom, college, bullies, Facebook, fitting in, standing out, all that kind of stuff, and then just partying, I guess. Uh, but yeah, apparently it says, you know, some of uh, music's hottest artists, Snoop Dogg, uh, YG, The New Boys, and Rejects. I've never heard of The New Boys or Rejects before. Uh, so this is, I guess, it says on the back 2011, but on the uh, right down there, but over here it says 2012, and the biggest party of 2012. So maybe it was filmed 2011, but it wasn't released in 2012. Uh, but yeah, at first, like, seeing the dance part, I was like, I don't really like the dance movies so much. But on the back, I like the high school party movies, so uh, I'm going to give it a chance for that. And I do like some of the people involved in here, so... Uh, I remember, again, being a big fan of Mario Van Peebles when he did, like, some of the action movies back in the day. Um, so, definitely going to give this one uh, a watch coming up soon. U.S. H.E.R. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I I'm trying to think of what else I've seen at the Dollar Tree. Like, there's certain, like, my Dollar Tree, I feel like they always have the same ones. So, whenever I find something new, I kind of, like, want to pick it up, even if, like, initially I have, like, mixed feelings on it. Like... <laughs> But again, I do like the party movie. So next up is one that I do have. So if you're going to do a, uh, a trade for this one, let me know. I think this was a really good visually stunning movie. Another uh, remake right here. And this is a uh, 20th Century Fox release, uh, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Uh, the first one was from like the 40s and it starred Danny Kay. Uh, but this one, I remember just blew me away with the visuals here um, and just how beautiful it is. I love the story of it too. Very inspirational. Uh, I love the cast here too. Ben Stiller directed this and uh, stars Kristen Wiig, uh, Sean Penn, uh, a bunch of other uh, Cheryl McLean's in here, Adam Scott, a bunch of recognizable people, but um, love the story. Very inspirational. I thought it was great direction from Ben Stiller, great acting too. And uh, just again, visually mind blowing. I love this film so much. I would definitely recommend the heck out of it. Uh, if you find it at your Dollar Tree, pick it up, do yourself a favor. Uh, and it's a Blu-ray DVD digital combo pack right there. So every format, essentially besides 4K, uh, no VHS either. But there you go. Those are the 14 pickups 
Let me know if you've seen any of these and what you think of them. Let me know which one is your favorite from this Dollar Tree haul. Uh, let me know if you picked up any Blu-rays at the Dollar Tree recently or ever for that matter. And let me know what your favorite pickup from the Dollar Tree is. Leave me those comments down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.